How is it going guys? This is Peter here. I bring a new topic for you today, fingers crossed you will find it as interesting as I do. I guess you still remember my Shiro mid busting with, but if you haven't seen that yet the link is in the description. So what you don't know is that particular video was just the icing on the cake, because Tans and I've been working on something much bigger before that. Thanks for your help mate. And actually it was two things at the same time, elite tomes and green weapons. And our purpose was to find out by what percentage different bosses may drop these items. Sadly both of these items are very affected by RNG, meaning if you are lucky, the desired green might drop for you in the very first run, but the opposite might be also true, so you can get no drops for a long time. But in general the more runs you do, the less likely your runs are influenced by too good or too bad RNGs. So we believed doing 200 runs might be enough to see where it all goes. Uh, first we did only 2 or 3 bosses, then we added new ones week by week, and finally stopped at 10, because we thought that's a nice number. Ok, so 200 multiplied by 10 is 2000 runs. Yeah, I know we are nerds, have to admit it, so that's why I said Shiro was only the last bit. One more thing, uh, when we did all these runs, there were no special events active, also no favor, uh, because we felt like these two, two rules were important to not get fake results. Maybe none of them changed the drop rates of elites and greens drastically, but we rather didn't risk it. Alright guys, let me show you each boss one by one, and also say a few words about the farms. The professions you are going to see now we found to be the quickest, and you know time really matters if you do something uh, 200 times, also we try to choose easy to reach bosses, uh, use the resign trick and occasionally paragon heroes to speed things up with uh, increased movement speed. First on the list is the Ritualist Construct, according to its name this is a Ritu boss with the green called Kaolin Wand. At first glance this seems to be hard to solo since there is an afflicted group close to it, but it can be pulled away with a long or flat bow. Low HP is a must have here because the build relies on Spoil Victor and the trick is to lure out the boss, then not get hit during the running phase and then hide behind the cliff. The boss has very strong healing skills, so it takes a while, but finally he will die. This was one of our best elite droppers, giving us 5 elite tomes and 15 green items. The next victim was Asterius the Mighty. Perhaps you can recognize this one more than the previous one, because I made a video about it a couple of years ago. Asterius Sight is a very useful green with Zealous and Enchanting mods. The farm goes like this, bring a Paragon hero, give him a decent running build, go together till the rush shrine, then stop and micro enduring harmony make haste and find a weakness in this order. Then flag the hero somewhere and go on. With increased movement speed you can catch Asterius just in time. He may be at the center, go left or go right depending on his actual route. And don't care about the other enemies, focus on the boss. The monks can't really heal him well, and very rarely the Berserk and Wendigos can finish their dagger chain and remove enchantments from us, but this happens like once every 20 runs. 4 elites and 13 green sites from Asterius. Ok guys, 2 down, 8 to go, the next one is a low level boss in factions, Takayun Tsi. This is a super fast farm and can be done in 23 or 24 seconds. Use Mindbender, Mantra of Frost and Stone Flash Aura, then aggro as many mantids as you can, then let Sliver Armor do the job. Sad news, no elite tombs from 200 runs, he is not a boss you should be farming for his green either since Takayun's pincers are low level daggers, also he had a lot of no drop runs too. Moving on, the next boss on the list is Johon the Oxflinger. Same build like at Asterius, uh, micro enduring harmony, make haste and find their weakness on your character, then flag the hero somewhere away, uh, the boss hits like a truck, can do easily 200 plus damage, so a lot of blocking skills come in handy, but even with all these blocking percents he finds a way to hit you. If you are very very unlucky you might die, but this is like 5% of the runs. And also don't let the wolves body block you, slalom between them and focus on the boss. It has a decent green Johans flung bow, 
uh, dropped 15 times, but sadly Elite Tomes only twice. The next one is not a classic solo boss farm because we rely on heroes in the first part. Uh, got to clear the area a bit, Silent Ancient Onata is, is the boss name. Good heroes are a must have uh, because Shuriken allies are powerful in hard mode. Also recommended to precos some defensive spirits before you grow. Once the group is done, micro make haste on you, flag heroes away, then quickly aggro the boss and come back to the safe spot. If you do it right, you can solo him before the next group arrives. If you can't, then you have to kill the second group too. The good news, Onata has a high chance to drop something, but mostly scrolls and or his green Onata shards. 3 elite tomes and 19 greens from Onata. As the Frigid Heart is our next boss, it is an ice elemental in ice clip chest. The Paragon hero can really speed up the farm, start from gunner's hold and avoid as many groups as you can, then run straight to the boss, maintain obsidian flash and stone flash, uh, then spike with sliver armor. This green has the same name by the way as the Frigid Heart, decent water staff, good for heroes maybe, 6 elite tomes and 18 greens from 200 runs, the most elites we got of all 10 bosses. Let's move on, Bizr Wingmander is another well-known boss, his green is Bizr's Benediction, uh, I think this is not a good weapon but people used to farm this boss for the elite monk tombs and not for his green. Low HP necro with spoil victor again, this seems to work well against healers. Start from Ludgardis Conservatory and keep left, uh, the boss is very close and can't hit you. So this is a very easy farm, make sure you don't aggro the nearby patrolling groups and he dropped elite tombs 4 times and greens 11 times. And the 8th boss on the list is Ashi Mindclouder, a mesmer boss. His weapon is the Mindclouder, good name and decent illusion weapon. Uh, start the run from Daika Inlet and keep left, give yourself some speed boost with the para hero. This is another simply farm, maintain spell prevention with obi flash, reduce incoming damage with stone flash and kill the boss with sliver. Only one elite tome and 11 greens from machine, not really worth farming him. The Rick of Bradmother now, I think everyone knows her, the raptor boss. She has the most hated green in the game, close of the Bradmother. Interestingly, when I'm farming during events, I get elites here very often, but this might be due to the fact that I do a lot of runs or the event increases drop rates. I don't know, but it always felt like a common drop. Start from Bratasam, grow as many raptors as you can, then spike. Two elite tomes and nine greens, sadly not as promising as expected. And last but not least, some gorgoy bosses at Normal Academy. These don't have greens, but can drop elites at least. Spasmo, Thunderbolt, Ignis, Fanaura and Rift, Telorau. This is another elementalist farm and a para hero. Similarly to the assassin boss in Factions Noob Island, these can drop too many items. I guess they are too low level. But we got two elite tombs from 200 runs and that's it. Ok guys, let's see the summary. On top of the list stands Asnil Frigid Heart with an elite tome chance of 3%. This means on average it takes 33 runs to get one elite tome from him. The worst was the assassin boss at, at Kantanub Island with 0 elites. At the green item Silent Ancient Onata takes the top spot, he can drop greens every 10.5 runs. And at the other end are Rekov and C with 22 runs for a green. So guys, from these 10 bosses we can say the following. Elite tombs have between 1-3% to chance to drop, greens have a bit more 5-10%. to Of course there is a possibility of finding bosses with higher or lower drop rates, simply because there are hundreds of bosses in this game. And actually I really enjoy farms like that, I love farming and recording drops, but got to ask you, do you want me to test other bosses too or not? What do you think of this topic? Because in my opinion elite tomb farming on its own was never really worth it, but I think this is interesting to see what certain bosses can drop. 
Maybe there is a green item you desire but you can't farm yet, let me know in a comment uh, because I'm open for new bosses and greens. Okay guys, enough talk, got to farm some more now, thanks for watching and see you next time.